Okay, so we discussed the general properties of this four vector. We decided that we could construct four dimensional objects. They would transform according to the Lorentz transformation, and there would be this invariant property which looked like the invariant interval, uh, but for a general four vector. Now let's consider some specific uh, situations. So uh, I'm going to start with a relatively involved problem, but I want to do that because it brings up a lot of the ideas, and then once we're done that, we'll talk a little bit about photons, because photons have very simple uh, four-vector ve four properties. So first of all, I'm not sure that I mentioned within the last uh, 40 minutes the point that this vector is called the four-momentum. And it has a few properties. The four momentum has a few properties. So this four vector is E over C uh, PX, PY, PZ. And we've been working in one-dimensional situations where uh, we're only considering the X component. We're not considering the y and z components. We're going to continue with that for the rest of the lecture. Uh, so in that case, the energy, of course, is gamma mc squared over c. So it's gamma mc. Uh, and the x momentum is gamma mv. And the y and the zero, y and the z are both zero. And uh, when you see this form for the four momentum, there's two very, very useful things that you can see that we're going to use in the problem we're about to do. So I'm just going to show you them so that we can refer back to them when we need them, uh, although we'll talk about them again at the time, which is that if you take this, this could be called the time component, the x component, the y component, and the z component. And the nice thing is the velocity in the x direction is just the x component of the momentum over the time component of the momentum times the speed of light. This is the velocity in the x direction. You can just ratio these components and you get the velocity. Why? Because this is gamma mv and this is gamma mc. And if I take put a c here, then that c cancels that c, that m, gammas cancel, and we're left with just v. Okay? So uh, we're going to use this fact when we use the four momentum. And then another very useful four, four momentum property is the property we just derived. To start with it, if we want to, if we we're just given a four momentum and you don't know the mass of the particle, then the mass of the particle is given by the time component of the four momentum squared minus the x component of the four momentum, of course, minus the y component squared minus the z component squared, but these we don't care about so much because they are going to be zero in everything that we do. Um, so it's the time component minus the x component uh, squared. That will be the mass squared, except that we have to get rid of a factor of c squared. So if we're given an arbitrary four momentum and we're about to be given that, we can work out the mass by differencing the squares of these. And that's exactly what we just did a few minutes ago when we were looking at what the invariant is. This is the invariant. The invariant of the, of the four momentum is the mass, the rest mass, times appropriate factors of the speed of light. Okay, we're going to use those now to do a problem. So you may recall that we've done a problem that looked like this. You have a bullet of mass m moving at speed v, and it hits and lodges into a block of mass m. And uh, so this is the before picture. picture, And then the after picture, picture is that you have a block now with a bullet lodged in it. So this is now a block with a bullet lodged in it. And it has a new mass, m final, which in the, in the, when we did this as a non-relativistic collision, was just the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block. This was just m plus m. 
But it's not going to be that now in relativity, because in relativity, as you know, energy carries mass, and we're going to have to pay attention to that. And then also, this whole system is now moving at some v final. And again, non-relativistically, this v final was very simply related to this original v. Okay, so now we're going to redo this problem in the general case that this velocity could be relativistic and see how the solution of that problem relates to the solution to the non-relativistic problem we did before. Okay, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to uh, conserve four momentum. So the nice thing is this four vector we've generated, which we've postulated, turns out this, this, these definitions are correct. This is the energy and this is the momentum. And so it really is the case that energy conservation and momentum conservation in the universe creates uh, four momentum conservation in special relativity. So we are going to now conserve four momentum in this problem and see what happens. So let's write it down. So first of all, when we, when we start, there's a four momentum for this bullet, which is gamma m c gamma m v zero zero, where of course the gamma here, I'm going to call it gamma initial, because we're going to have the initial, and we'll call this the initial velocity, just to be really, really clear. This is the initial velocity of the bullet, and there's an initial gamma associated with that initial velocity. And eventually we're going to have a final velocity with a final gamma. We'll get to that in a second. Um, so this is the four momentum of the bullet. And then there's a four momentum for the block. And you might think, well, it's not moving. It should have no momentum. But remember, this energy is gamma mc. And even when the velocity is zero, gamma mc is not zero. Gamma is one. The mass is not zero. And c is a constant. So the four momentum of this non-moving block is not zero, but is actually mc, zero, zero, zero. The spatial components of the momentum are zero, but the object has rest mass energy, mc squared. Therefore, e over c, the e over c component of its momentum is mc. So there's a non-trivial momentum for the bullet, there's a trivial momentum for the block, but it's not a zero momentum, because the four momentum contains rest mass energy as well as uh, kinetic energy and momentum. Okay, and this, when I add together these two momenta, I'm going to get the final momentum, and the final momentum we're going to be able to think about as being gamma f, the final gamma, which will be different from the initial gamma, the final mass, which will be different, it's going to turn out, than the masses, the sum of the masses, mc, and then gamma f, uh, mf, vf, zero, zero. Uh, one of my zeros went off the edge of the screen there, I think, but it doesn't really matter. We're not too worried about that. Okay, so now we can work out the speed of this final block in the way that we just suggested, and we can work out the mass of this final block in the way that we just suggested. So let's just compute those. So we're just computing. We are believing our postulates of the four momentum, and we're believing that this is a conserved quantity in this collision. And this is going to have some nice consequences. So here we go. So let's get the let's write down expressions. And the simplification of the mass expression is going to take a while. So let's just start with the velocity expression because the velocity expression is so simple. So the velocity expression is that the velocity, the final velocity, is the x component of the momentum over the time component of the momentum times c. You can just see it right here. It's just this component over this component, that cancels out everything except the c. You multiply the c, that cancels it out. But if, if four momentum cons conservation is correct, this four momentum is just the sum of these two four momenta. So we can just take these two four momenta and add them together. And the x component of this four momentum is gamma mvi, and the x component of this four momentum is zero, because the thing's not moving. 